Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Well, everyone's a special guest because they take their time to join me on our show. I'm joined by another podcast creator, actually, uh, Ms. Jen Smith. And I'm going to let her go into details about her podcast and the things that she's doing. Um, but this is another uh, example of meeting people for the first time via the podcast world. Now, we were connected through mutual friends on LinkedIn. Uh, one of Her formal guest was someone that I knew, um, and I let her drop that name as well. And then that's just how it is. And then we decided let's collab and let's work on doing a podcast recording together. So without further ado, Jen, please just give the listeners a little bit of who you are, and then we'll go right into this episode. Excellent, Philip. Thank you for that warm introduction. And hello to all of your listeners. My name is Jen Smith, and I believe that career success doesn't have to be at the expense of living a radiantly happy and healthy lifestyle. So I'll just share a little bit of my background. My first job post-graduation from college, so that pivotal moment when you graduate and you're all excited to go into the working world, my first job was working the graveyard shift as a frontline supervisor in a potato chip factory. (laughs) So I had no idea what I wanted to do. It was kind of like that Sheryl Sandberg quote where she says something to the effect of, if you're offered a seat on the rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on. And this was a a seat at a very well-known company. So Frito-Lay, which is part of PepsiCo. And I was offered a seat uh, as a frontline supervisor and I took the job. So fast forward 15 years from supervising teams in a potato chip factory to a major pivot into human resources where I spent the majority of my career. So I built a college recruiting department for a global company from scratch. I made all kinds of career jumps, U-turns, steps up, steps down, multiple industries, Fortune 200 companies. And this has all left me with lifelong lessons and experiences and even a few surprises along the way, which I now take into consideration as a career coach. So I have my own business called Flourish Careers, and I really help other people navigate this changing world of work and ultimately, hopefully, help them find more alignment in their career, which is a process that I call heart-based career planning. So they don't make as many U-turns, steps up and down and mistakes that I made along the way. So that's a little bit about my background and where I am today. I love it. I love it. And and, and we got connected through your coaching business. You you branched out to create content for your coaching business, such as your podcast and newsletter and all those things. And that's how we got connected, right? Yes. So for those Uh, aspiring career coaches out there, career professionals, making sure that you're building content out there to connect you with new people. So maybe before we go in this episode, can you just talk about like, what was the ideas of starting a podcast in addition to your coaching um, for that purpose of connecting with people? Sure. I love this question. So if you would have asked me, I'm going to be very honest here. If you would have asked me A year or so, a year and a half ago to start a podcast, I probably would have run the other way and said, heck no. (laughs) I'm a pretty introverted person. So kind of getting out there and sharing content is a little uneasy for me. But I'm on a mission to help people with their career and make their career so much more fulfilling, which spills into so many different aspects of their lives. And I will tell you that I learned so much from podcasting, from, you know, even going through my career to starting a business to all the things. And I just felt like it would be such a great way to give back, basically. So take all of this stuff that I've learned from being an HR leader and being a recruiter and use this platform to give back to job seekers and help even more people because there's only so many people I can help one on one, but be able to have a platform to help even more people navigate this wild world of work that we're living in and really try to find, you know, that heart within their career in terms of, you know, fulfillment for for themselves and for their career. So I actually surprisingly have loved <laughs> creating content through a podcast. Um, I just recently started inviting guests. So Philip, you're actually 
guest number three on the Flourish Careers podcast, which I'm so excited about. Um, but having guests opened my eyes to how fun it is and how you know, networking, quote unquote, in this way can really open new doors. And it's just a way to make new professional friends in a way that's also giving back to other people who are listening. So it's just been overly enjoyable and exciting for me to be able to share content and share ideas and share tips and share stories in this way. I absolutely love that. And I think that's the, I didn't, I didn't go into it with that mindset, but I think that's the, the happenstance of that is that people have learned from the episodes that I've shared and it became, like you said, a way to connect with new people and, and for people to learn when they're not around and, and reach a bigger audience. So I love that. So I want to go right into the heart of the matter. <laughs> I, I think I, oh, that, that was really cheesy, but um, I want to learn. Uh, so you, you've kind of started to develop uh, maybe like your own, I don't know, it's a career philosophy. I don't know what we want to call it where uh, you kind of have a new acronym, right? And I actually love acronyms. I love how you've taken a thing that we've all known about SMART goals and applied it and said heart. So can you talk about one, the origin of the heart mindset or philosophy for you and then explain what that is for the listeners? Yes, thank you for asking that. So, you know, I, I think about my time as an HR leader and when it, when it comes to goal setting, you know, I, I always felt like it was this check the box exercise. Like we have to get this document, virtual document, whatever it is, we've got to, you know, write our goals and we've got to get it in by a certain date. And if you don't get it in by the certain date, you're going to get in trouble because you're on a list. And, you know, it just felt like this really rigid check the box exercise that was not motivating. It was not inspiring. It just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And of course we had to make them smart. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant time. And I was like, oh, this just feels so rigid. And so with that, as I started to develop my career coaching philosophy, one of the ideas that in one of my goals with career coaching is to align people in their career. So it's not about, okay, my dad was a lawyer, so I have to go be a lawyer. It's no, it's about pausing and figuring out who you are as a human and how to align you and your strengths and your interests and your values and your heart in your career. So it's really about taking a pause and doing an inventory and then mapping that to a career path that's going to feel fulfilling. Now, I know that people don't stay in careers for 30 years anymore, like we used to usually. There's some type of meandering path, but at least if we can get into alignment with our hearts and who we truly are, then that can be so much more fulfilling. And I think of a world, like imagine a world where everybody feels radiantly happy and healthy in their career. I mean, just imagine that. It would it would spill over into so many different aspects of life and relationships. And I think of silly things like road rage would be so much more minimal because people would be so much happier going to and coming home from work. And social media would be a delight because people aren't complaining about everything anymore. You know, so there's just so many elements and so many ripples when people are happy and healthy at work. And I'm not saying that the world's utopia, it's never going to be perfect or anything like that, but it's just about alignment. And so to kind of take it towards the smart plus the heart in terms of goals, I'll just kind of share what the acronym stands for, if that's helpful for folks. So basically the way that I think about career planning is that you want to think about it being heart centered. So are your career choices in alignment with your core and lifestyle values? I feel like lifestyle is so critical nowadays, you know, especially after the pandemic and everything. So how do you want your life to look? And then let's figure out how to integrate career into that. So maybe you want to work remote. Maybe you want to work from a van and travel around. Maybe you want to go into an office every day. Maybe you want to work out in the elements all the time. Like whatever that lifestyle looks like for you, let's integrate your career into that. So H is heart centered. E is energizing. So we want your career intentions and your day-to-day -to, -day to generate some excitement in your belly. Like we want you to feel excited about the work that you're doing. A stands for agile. The world is moving at a rapid pace. So your goals should be easy to iterate. They should be nimble. You should be able to kind of go with the flow a little bit. They're not going to be written in blood. That's actually one of the things that I taught. I probably say those words every single day when I talk with folks in career planning you know, your, your goal is not set in cement. It's not written in blood. It can change. So don't feel like, like take the pressure off. Like you don't have to like have it all figured out right now. 
Um, and then the R stands for realistic. So I'm all about kind of like quarterly planning when it comes to careers. And yeah, of course, we're going to have these like longer term goals, but how do we reverse engineer those longer term goals into quarterly plans or seasonal plans so they're actually realistic and doable? And then the T st stands for tiny tasks or tiny actions. So I'm all about breaking down your heart-based intentions into tiny actions that get on the calendar, you can mark them on your calendar, you get them out of your head and onto paper, figure out the little things that you need to do in order to have that momentum to keep moving towards your goals. So I feel like when, you know, you can imagine, you know, kind of waking up every day and you're feeling energized, you know that you're using your own skills and abilities to their very best and you're in alignment with how you want to operate from a day to day and your your lifestyle's aligned and i just feel like when that happens the sky's the limit and you know one of the things that people think a lot of times when i say heart based career planning it's like making a career of your hobbies that's that's not what i'm saying here it's more about aligning your career to you and your heart and your spirit versus you know oh i love you know to paint so i'm going to go be a painter i mean that's great and that can totally be a career path but that's i want to always make sure that i alineate you know kind of differentiate that a little bit for folks so does that make sense yeah i mean also i mean i think it's it's realistic i think that you know it, it can meet people in different stages you know i think i can see this exercise with students but also can see this with more senior staff and maybe those, you know, was it midlife crisis? Like, I don't yes. know what I'm going to do, career switcher. I'm not feeling it. So while you were developing this, you know, take us back to like what the lab, the, the lab when you were doing it, like, were you, like, were you trying different acronyms and, you know, did you like not say focus group? Did you like share it with some people and test and say, what y'all think about this heart? You know, like take us back to that. And as you develop this thought. Ooh, okay, so I'm going to shout out to my dear friend, Kate Solis Silva. So she had a post on Instagram that talked about heart based goals. And I was it just really like literally jumped off the screen at me. I was like, Oh, my gosh, yes, like, that's like what's been kind of swirling around in my mind a little bit here. And so she didn't really have like an acronym or anything for it. But I thought like, wow, what if we could combine our SMART goals with our heart goals and really bring this, you know, into a, a, a plan for folks or a framework for folks to think about their career planning. And so I just kind of started, I love acronyms. I love frameworks. I love, you know, templates, anything like that, that can make things easier for people. And so I just started playing around with the words. I'll be, I'll be honest, like it's changed a little bit over, you know, over the past couple, I don't know how long I've been doing this, maybe two years or so. Um, but yeah, so I started, I started kind of playing around with that. I came up with a couple of ideas and I'll, I'll just share, like I've used social media as ways to test things. And I always think about, especially as an entrepreneur or, or self-employment, it's almost like you're always a scientist, like you're always testing things to see what works and what doesn't work. And I'll never forget the first time I posted this acronym and just shared like, Hey, I actually think I said, we're getting rid of smart goals and, and replacing them with heart goals. And it flew. I mean, it was one of my most responded, commented on posts ever. And I said, well, I think I have something here, you know? And so I started to just build that into my career coaching philosophy and my practice. And, you know, it's a big part of what I talk about when I work with folks at all levels um, of their career, just like you mentioned. So that was kind of the initial way that it started to come together. And then every time, and I wasn't sure, I was like, oh, maybe this is really dumb. Like I would, you know, I wasn't really sure. But then every time I mention it to people, people, something zings, like something sits with, with folks. And so then I just started talking about it more and more. And now it's became part of my overall career change framework. Like what you were mentioning, um, you know, midlife crisis, or somebody went down one path that their parents told them they had to go down or they thought was them. And now they're like, er, we got to do a U-turn, but I don't really know what that looks like. So this is a, a way to figure that out and help people kind of get back to a heart-based path. So that's great. Um, take us. So, you know, I, I'm, you know, I used to work with students now, I work mostly with employers, but, you know, I, I think intake, asking those questions. So let's say, you know, um, I'm a new client of yours. How do you, how do we, how do we, you don't go right to the heart. Like, do you, how do you ask these questions? How do you, um, do you, do you have like a worksheet? Like, how do you like embed new people into this philosophy or, or framework? Cause I think it's great, but how, how do you, you know, kind of, lead people into it. 
Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I always start with what I would just call like an intake questionnaire just to get a sense of where somebody is. And I and I listen for a couple things. And this is kind of how I break down like mapping your career path. And so I listen for a couple of things. First, I listen for mindset. So I ha that has to be the foundation. Somebody has to have what I would call a learning mindset or a growth mindset or an open mindset in order to make a change. So if, if I hear a little bit of like a victim mentality or someone that just thinks that everything happened to them versus, you know, them being able to get. So that's the first thing that I, I try to just kind of test for, because if you don't have an open or a learning mindset, you're never going to be able to make a change. So that's the first thing. Then from there, I ask some questions around three kind of key areas. So first is core and lifestyle values. And when you ask somebody that question, it's like, uh, what, what are you talking about? So think about your perfect day. What does your perfect day look like? This is actually a very simple question, but it's very difficult to answer. So everything from what time do you wake up? What are you seeing when you wake up? Who's around you? What's around you? What do you do first in the morning? How, how do you want to spend your day? What kind of projects do you like working on? If you got lost track of time, what are you doing? So just questions to get people more grounded into who they are without work around them. So it's kind of like take you out of the work setting. And let me just hear about what would be perfect for you. Sometimes I ask people um, like blue sky thinking, if time, money and location didn't matter, how would you spend your day? And that can start to give me clues into what might be exciting for someone's career path. And I'm not making any decisions. The career coaches do not make any decisions. They just work with folks to partner and pull, kind of pull things out and then help map. So the ideas that I think about or what I'm listening for other than the mindset piece is, okay, let's think about an industry that's exciting to you, like something that you're interested in or how you want to make an impact. So I think about like this big bucket of industry. Then I go down and say, okay, what are you doing when you lose track of time? If you had three tasks on your calendar all day, all week, and you were so excited to do them, what would they be? And then that maps to potentially a type of a role. And then from there, I say, okay, now we've got industry, we've got role. What type of companies meet your core and lifestyle values that are going to be a match for you? So quick example there. I remember working with a gentleman who very... Um, you know, kind of like quiet. One of his core values was harmony. And he was super interested in this shiny new startup. And one of their values was intensity. And I asked him, I said, do you think like, depending on what intensity means to that organization, knowing that you value harmony and you're kind of like this even keel, smooth sailor, do you think that's going to be a match? And so what he ended up doing was went out and got some more information about, he asked, informational interview questions about what does intensity mean at that company? And it was not a match for him. And so then, you know, you kind of go back and say, okay, that company's, we're going to cross that off the list. Let's find somebody else that is going to be more in alignment with who I am. So that's kind of like what I listen for and the questions that I ask in order to get to those three kind of key pieces that map to a potential new path for somebody. I love that. I love that. So I love that in a mindset of one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I love that. Uh, I just, I actually, if you have a worksheet, you got to send it to me. I'm going to fill it out and be a, a guinea pig with this. How have you, have you presented this on a large scale at a presentation or workshop? Um, how, how, how do you think groups, have you ever done it to groups and, and seen the difference on how groups respond to this, this heart mindset? Cause I could see it being, cause you said, um, you know, organizations want smart goals, right? And, you know, that's an individual thing, but also organizations use smart goals, like, you know, like strategic, basically calling strategic plan. But I could see an organization really using heart as a mindset to like, uh, what is our office's perfect day or uh, what uh, what kind of environment do we want to foster and what do we want, you know, our organization to be energized. So have you ever, have you had a group being introduced to this heart mindset before, or am I just kind of brainstorming right now? I love this idea. I've actually been thinking about how to infuse this into in my backgrounds in the corporate world. So I definitely feel like the corporate world could use a little more heart these days. And so I've been thinking about how to how to infuse it. I'll tell you, I I presented this idea and I was so nervous about doing this. And I know you're you're you have a military background. So I presented this idea to a group of folks that were transitioning out of the military. So 
Um, it's called Hiring Our Heroes. They're an amazing organization and they take folks that are that are ready. It's a kind of a leadership development program that went through the military, they're military leaders and they're transitioning into the corporate world and they go through this program and they asked me to present. And so I presented this concept and this idea. I have like a whole framework that I walked through with them so nervous that it was not going to be well received because we're talking military, you know, pretty rigid structured people here. I will tell you, I got amazing feedback about this uh, framework and, and how to think about careers in this way, which I was just so thrilled about. And this was a group of 500 people across the United States. So, and I have a worksheet to your point, I have a career, what I would call a heart-based career development plan that includes the goal setting process I just walked through, but then it also takes it a step further into a development plan using three key areas of adult learning, which is experience, exposure, and education. And that's from, I didn't make that up. That's from a, you know, a leadership um, professional development group, but you take your goals and then you break it down. Like what experiences do I need or what experiences do I have that transfer? You know, what, who do I need to meet? Who do I need to be exposed to? you know, where do I get this out into the world? And then education, is there anything I need to learn in order to meet my goals or close the gap? So, so that's the career development plan worksheet that I have, uh, or workbook that I have that I shared with these folks. And, and to your point, it was really well received. And maybe this is a nudge that I, that you're asking me this question that I'm going to take this, um, and potentially pitch some other organizations if, if, if it could be helpful. No, I think, I think because it's just the connection to smart goals. I've done lots of workshops on smart and then like, yeah, obviously we think about systems, right? Individuals, right? But like also greater communities. And I could see both, you know, synonymy, like, you know, like you're saying, I, I definitely think it's interesting to see the culture of a military environment, but it's still applicable because they still have their own identity, right? What is their core values? You know, loyalty, a loyalty to the country, you know, service, uh, sacrifice, et cetera, right? And you can see that naturally even, as an organization that trickles down to the individual, right? Like because there are opportunities in the military, they taken on those values of the system, right? So right. I can see this being, I see, I can see what you're doing being helpful on a macro, micro scale and a macro level. Um, you know, I definitely think identity first. Uh, we talked about intersections and identity and, uh, and on your on your platform, you know, talk about maybe how this framework is, and I think it is, uh, culturally appropriate to different identities. And uh, I'm not going to, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on it, but I'm already thinking thoughts of how this could be also culturally appropriate, you know, leading with your heart and not smart. Right. But I want to hear your thoughts on how this could, this mindset, the heart framework could be culturally appropriate to different cultures. Absolutely. I mean, this is, this framework is for anyone and everyone. And, uh, you know, a big piece of the framework is reflection on you as a human and who you are and what you stand for and the work that you want to produce. And it's all about you and it gets to your roots, the core of who you are as a human, and then making sure that you are going to be safe and comfortable in a working environment in order to bring your best ideas, in order to do your best work. And when we're not in those environments, it just shuts us down. And you know what that does? It causes so much stress, which leads to anxiety or health issues or whatever it is. And I've been there. I've been there and it's not a fun place to be. And so really the root, and I'm glad you asked this question, Phil, because really the root of this is to figure out what makes you, you, and then find an organization that's going to allow you to be you <laughs> within your organization and not be afraid to speak up in meetings and, you know, be able to bring your ideas to the table. And that's really where the beauty of diversity and inclusion and, and belonging comes to light when organizations can innovate and bring these new ideas to the table. And I think go back to that, imagine a world where everyone's happy and healthy in their career. I mean, imagine the innovation and the productivity and just everything skyrockets when you think of it that way. And I, that is my mission. Like I want people to feel safe and comfortable and they work with people who get them. They don't have to be people just like them, but they're people who get them. They're their people. You know, you're working with your people. I'll tell you, um, one of the things when I first started down this path of, you know, self-employment, I went to a, um, a conference with, with a group of folks that would call themselves creative entrepreneurs. 
And this terminology resonated with me so much. And when I met these other folks, I was like, oh my gosh, these are my people. Like, what have I been doing for 15 years? Like, these are my people. You know, it took me 15 years to figure that out. So again, my mission is to help people, A, figure out who they are, because sometimes we lose track. We get into these jobs, we get into this, this life, and sometimes we just get off track. And so, you know, come back to yourself, figure out what that is, and then map that accordingly. Yeah, I love that. And so one thing I thought about too, and then you brought it up um, about the gentleman that assessed his values and then had to look at an organization. Are you sure? So what are some ways, this is, this is probably a good tip point too, like leading with heart. What are ways that um, an individual can assess whether uh, a, a new venture is psychologically safe for them or sees them as themselves, or as you said, you know, is a place where they can speak up and use their voices. How, what kind of questions or what things would you suggest to a client um, using this heart framework for them to assess a good next step for them uh, in regards to the work environment? Right. The best thing you can do is talk to humans that work at the organization that you're thinking about. That is the best way to get a peek under the tent. And I always recommend that folks do this in a way that feels comfortable for them. So again, self-identify as an introvert. I'm not going to be out there making a big splash, you know, as much as I can, I can avoid that. So for me, it's one-on-one -on -one conversations. So who, who, how can I make a connection with somebody at one of these organizations or the power of LinkedIn, my friends, get out there, do a search for your organ, the organization you're interested in, see the humans that work there. Maybe you have something in common with somebody, start a conversation. And I always recommend doing this, um, before there's a job at stake, because that way you're not selling yourself. The company's not selling anything on you. So they're not putting their best foot forward because they're, they have a gap on their team and they need to fill a gap really quickly. So you're genuinely learning more about an organization. So you connect with someone, you have a 15 minute conversation and ask really good questions. And, and what I like to, to recommend here is to ask for examples. So like the example that I shared with you, Hey, so-and-so, you know, I see on your website that one of your company values is intensity. Can you give me an example of how that's played out in the day-to-day? -day? Oh, sure. We're crazy. We're, you know, we, we, we are like tornadoes. We're running around, you know, like crazy trying to get things done. Like, okay, I know that's not going to work for me, you know? So not that you're saying that, but it's in the backyard. So you can get these examples of what it really is like to work there. Or, you know, if, if you value, you know, um, let's just say harmony. So maybe one go back to this gentleman, your value is harmony. And you see a company that has a similar type of a value or a different word, maybe similar concept. You could ask how that plays out in their day to day, or what do you love about your role and what do you not love about it? Uh, you know, so, so you can really get good questions and then get examples from the people that work there before there's a job available to make sure that you're assessing the organization in a way that's going to feel comfortable. It's not foolproof, but at least you know that you can feel comfortable stepping into, you know, stepping into an organization. And the other benefit to this approach is that you're building relationships and you could potentially get thought of for jobs before they come open. So you start to build these relationships with people, talk a little bit about who you are and what you're looking for in your career. And then who knows, they go into a team meeting tomorrow and their manager comes to the table and says, oh, you know, Sarah's quitting and, you know, we're going to have a gap on our team. Does anybody know anyone? And everyone looks at each other and they're like, oh, yeah, Philip, I just talked to him yesterday. He'd be great addition to our team. Let me text him and see if he'd be interested in applying. And that's really how our world of, you know, networking and, and advice chats or informational interviews kind of can come to play in the in the job seeking world. Does that make sense? Oh, that, made perfect, that makes perfect sense. We always I always say, you know, to our students, you know, we're talking about diversity, equity and inclusion is. I loved your mindset is probably do it proactively before the organization sells them on it. And I always joke, I even say this about grad schools, like the best people to talk to in grad when you're interested in grad school is the students that are in grad school, not like the the program, because they're going to say they're, you know, if you're interested in a grad school, they're going to send their admissions representative and say it's the best program in the world and the rankings are off the chain. But the best person to probably talk to as a student that's growing through the program, what class do you like? Do you like this? Whatever. So I love that mindset of asking questions and maybe even starting earlier too, as you said too, like 
I would tell a student to reach out and talk to people about grad school, not probably when the application is due next week. Maybe <laughs> like, you know, like do that a year or two out when you're interested. Like, I'm just interested in grad school. Let me reach out to X, Y, and Z. Um, one of my thoughts is I loved your mindset of extrovert, introvert, you know, planners, not planners, um, and the flexibility on those things. Um, but one of the things I did say, one of the things I did hear is that before you even started your coaching relationship, you have to um, kind of understand that that person's in a, a learning space or in a growing space. Um, I'm just curious, have you ever had to like really say, I'm so sorry, I'm not the client, like I'm not the coach for you because they weren't in that space um, and just give an example. And then on the flip side, like maybe they came around and they were later on in a space where they were open to growth and all that. So I'm just curious because I, I think that is more so like, I think when we hear a lot of coaches, they're going to just take anyone they want, but you're really firm in your values. Like, for me to have a beneficial coaching relationship, I need to know that the person is at the right space to get started. And I think that's a good thing, right? You're not money driven. You want to make sure that the relationship is beneficial for you too. And it's a good experience as you coach someone. 100%. Absolutely. And sometimes people just aren't ready for coaching. Like they think they are, but they just aren't ready for it. And that's okay. You know, and, and I would be doing somebody a disservice if I did take them on as a client and they weren't ready for coaching. So, um, so a couple things here. So, so I listen for that learning mindset. If I think somebody has it, but it might not be ready just yet, that's where I will talk about mindset in one of our very first intro conversations. And I'll be frank, I used to be nervous to talk with clients about mindset because I thought they thought I would be woo woo or, you know, whatever. Like I, I was nervous to talk about it, but then I realized if I didn't talk about it, it was doing the person a disservice. So I, I, I will be very frank with someone and ask the questions like, are you open to change? Are you ready for change? There's a lot of work that goes into the process. Are you ready for that? And sometimes I even recommend, you know, you might not be ready for career coaching yet. Have you thought about a spiritual advisor or have you thought about, you know, a therapist or something else to kind of get you over those hurdles? And then you're ready for career coaching. Now, I'll tell you, it's funny because I hear from people a lot that, you know, our, our one-on-one -on -one career coaching conversations are like therapy. There's a big difference between coaching and therapy. And one of my colleagues once said that career coaching is not therapy, but it can feel therapeutic. And one of the reasons for that, I think, is that a good coach is going to see a few steps ahead of you and be able to guide you. And it's very action oriented. So coaching is very future focused where therapy and I'm not a therapist, but from what I understand, it's more backward looking and career coaching can feel really good because you're taking action. Like I said, those tiny actions, you're taking tiny actions to help your career. So um, so I, I try to listen. Uh, I try to ask good questions in order to understand. And if I if I if I feel like it's not going to be a fit, I will definitely let someone know. And I always try to make recommendations uh, for that person to be able to move forward if career coaching isn't right for them right now. I love it. I love it. Well, I think, you know, this is great. Uh, I think we are ready to go into our next segment. Um, it's called Shot for Shot. Ooh. This is an opportunity. You get to ask me any random question. I ask you any random question. Do you want to go first or I go first? Oh, boy. You go first. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take you through your own thing. Um, what is the perfect day for you? You know, like you said, like, let's give a little, give it back at you. Uh, you know, practice what you preach. What's the perfect day for you and what energizes you? Ah, I love this question. So I literally designed my business around my perfect day for me. So perfect day for me. I'm an early riser. So I like to get up when the sun comes up. And my favorite thing to do is to get outside. And I have a dog. She's a 130 pound Newfoundland. She's a gentle giant. She's super sweet. So she drags me around the neighborhood, which I call it a soul stroll, which is I did not make that up, but got it from somebody else where we just go for a walk around the neighborhood. It's so peaceful. No one's around. You just kind of get lost in the environment and being outside. Um, or I go over to the park and I take a walk at the park and I grab coffee, come home. And I love spacious morning. So a perfect day for me is to have a spacious morning, a couple hours where I can just make sure, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the day. I do my planning or get content out or whatever schedule, whatever I have to do. And then usually midday is when I start conversation. So I love connecting with folks, you know, midday through, through the afternoon. 
And then um, usually wrapping up around 4, 4.30. And another thing that I love to do is cook dinner. So uh, my husband gets home from work around 5, 5.30. And I love to just spend a little bit of time creating something delicious for us. And, uh, and then we kind of wrap up the day with another walk and watch one of our shows and get to bed early because we're both early risers. So, so that's my, that's my perfect day. Good question. That sounds really great. It sounds chill. Like, <laughs> it's very chill. Yeah, it's very chill. And I, and I like, I like walks, uh, you know, definitely, uh, a big proponent of walking, walking for well being. I'll send you yeah. that article too. I wrote an article about it. Um, that is I love the alliteration good. walking yeah. for well-being. Yeah, you know, awesome. it's just a good, you know, all looking around. Also, socially, you get to if you walk and meet people, you meet people. Oh, yes. Meet. I love walks. So what's your question for me? My question for you is, so we're talking about heart-based career planning. I feel like you are very in alignment with your work, but if you could go back in time and change one major career decision, what would it be? I would like earlier, I talked to people the other day, I would probably study the same thing in undergrad, like history, but I would have added a media component, knowing like crystal ball that I like media. Uh, our university, JMU, had a thing called SMAD, you know, media, like School of Media Arts and Design or something like that. Can I don't that. So I would have took a class in that and would have learned a little bit more about broadcasting and audio production. Maybe not the video part, but I, I, I definitely... You know, as my mom's, you know, my dad says, I have a face for radio. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I, I definitely, as a joke, yeah. But as, you know, I definitely would have learned, I would have incorporated more um, creative skill building curriculum into my studies. So I still loved history. I loved what I learned. I still love getting my master's in counseling. But I think now that I know that I'm going in this lane, I love it, love media as well. I think I would have started training myself a little earlier. Um, in that right and so i wouldn't change completely i love education i love being an educator but i would have gave myself a little bit more of a jump start on that media part and the skill building part with media uh, i don't know where i would have been maybe i you know but i think it happened for a reason right what if i would have went into a totally different industry and i'm working in radio and i wouldn't have been connected to all these students so i, I have no regrets maybe I, I just wish i had more skills or more time with those skills if that makes sense like i wish i just had more media experience but Right. And who knew podcasting would be what it is today? You know, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's too, like, I, I had no clue, right? Like right. I, the, back when I was in college, it was radio, like real radio and that. So maybe this ideas and you know, the things I'm doing in creation now wouldn't have been in existence because, you know, this medium didn't really exist. Yes, right. Podcasting wasn't taken off. So maybe it all aligned for the, the right time, but I just, I don't know. I like, I like it now. I just wish I was a little bit, you know, learned a little bit more about audio editing and chopping and all oh, that yeah. stuff a little bit earlier. That'd been cool. Awesome. So this has been great. You know, I definitely incorporate all your resources. Please send me the worksheet. I'm going to do all that stuff myself or subscribe to your newsletter and all those things. But nice. this is the part of the show called shout outs and plugs. So shout outs, show love to anyone you want to show love to, and then plugs similar to, you know, where we can find you, what are you working on and things that people can connect with you. So basically it's just kind of your platform. I say shout outs and plugs and stage is set. It's all yours. Awesome. Well, let's go back to my dear friend, Kate Solis Silva and give a shout out to Kate for the initial inspiration for heart-based career planning. Kate is a leadership coach. She's a holistic leadership coach, has so much of the well-being world aligned with her and her work um, as a leadership coach. So we will shout out to Kate. And then in terms of where you can find me, so I have a podcast called The Flourish Careers Podcast. I'd love for you to check that out. We talk all about heart-based career planning and making career changes and all kinds of insider tips and tricks for my work as a recruiter on the inside of an organization and an HR leader on the inside of an organization for so many years. Um, and then in terms of social, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, and my website is flourish.careers. Well, that's amazing. And definitely uh, have all those information in the show notes. And I think so glad that we're able to connect and we'll stay engaged. Um, and and I really just really like what you're doing. I, like I said, I'd be a guinea pig and, and love your the heart mindset. I think it really resonates with, you know, value driven, you know, value driven career purpose, all those things, the well-being. Really, I can see all those themes jumping in there. Um, and so 
Thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, Positive Filter listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of Positive Filter. Um, Please like, subscribe, share this episode with a family member friend. As I said, every episode is dedicated to the memory of my late father-in-law, Jeff Kirsch. And so every show is uh, the Jeff Kirsch Anti-Hunger Fund for all his work that he did to fight uh, food insecurity during his career. So please check that out be, you know, and consider donating to that fund to support those going into the work of uh, uh, fighting food insecurity. Um, this has been a great episode. Like all the things, subscribe, stay connected, and we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.